G'day guys, Derek Best, Big and Fight for Life. Um, as you know, the Big and Fight for Life, what I do is I like to provide knowledge to the, to the audience and uh, uh, the, our, my main goal is to reduce the number of people taking their own life and I do that providing knowledge. And today I'm lucky enough to be with Rebecca and Pretty. They've got a program called Shift Q. Um, it's about empowering women to be the best version of themselves. But before we go into the fantastic program that they offer for women, what I want to do is I want to get a bit of their lived experience because they've both got a fantastic story. And I think it's going to really resonate with the women out there that might be in a relationship or somewhere stuck. It doesn't have to be domestic violence, but it could just be somewhere that they're stuck and they're looking for a way to get out and how to get on the road to happiness. So Rebecca, would you like to start? Yeah. Hi. Thanks, Derek. Um, so I guess in terms of my own story, Derek, um, I six years ago, I left my relationship um, that I was in at that time. I was married. I had been in that relationship for 25 years. So I was 19 when I'd entered it um, and I had two children. I still have two children, but they were quite young at the time. And I was living the life of corporate executive in a global law firm, in a senior um, executive position, living in Sydney, and what looked from the outside as being very kind of shiny. Uh, I would I describe it as the Stepford wife, you know, perfect wife, perfect life, you know, um, doing the school run, going and, you know, delivering strategic advice in the office. Um, but behind closed doors, when I went home each day, um, I was actually dealing with a relationship that was uh, not serving me or anyone in that home. Um, my husband was a, my then husband was a colleague and a gambling addict. And so that relationship was fraught with uh, domestic violence at an emotional, mental and um, physical level. And um Anyone who knows anyone with a gambling addiction knows that there's no money around either. So there was coercive control and, um, you know, slowly over time, uh, things that um, sound horrendous became really normal for me. So driving around with a safe bag in the boot of my car became normal. Um, not having a key to my own letterbox became very normal. Not knowing where our grocery money went became very normal. And, um, you know, I kind of, I think in a way at that time, I had my head in the sand a little bit, just trying to cope. I reached a level of burnout. I reached depression and anxiety, and I was a shadow of my, of my, my sense of self. Um, yeah, and then I reached everyone, but to everyone around you, you look like you had the light. The, the oh, life. absolutely. Absolutely. I did. You know, you know, I was kind of the go to person. She's got all her stuff together. She knows what she's doing. We're going to ask her for advice. You know, I gave advice for a living. I was coaching other people on how to be great business leaders. Um, you know, I was at that school and I was president of the PNC for eight years. And so I was running, you know, massive projects within the school community. Um, I had everything happening. My, you know, my children looked perfect. I looked perfect. Everything from the outside looked perfect. Um, but from the inside, it definitely was not. And then there was a particular day where I crumbled um, in myself and I had to rebuild myself. And it was through the rebuilding. Uh, there were certain, you know, courses of events where I had to leave that marriage, which was six years ago, two days ago, actually. Um, and so then um, I spent a little bit of time with my kids, like us getting back on our feet. And then during COVID, um, we, we just weren't there. Like we weren't living the life we wanted to. Yeah. Just just, just for the people that are listening. Yes. You've taken a lot. You've taken a lot on. When was that? When was that exact point, that moment you knew I've got to get out and I've got to do this? Um, I'd been working with a, with a therapist for a while. And I was a little bit, um, I was refusing to see what needed to happen. I was refusing to see that we needed to get out. There was a pinnacle point. And that pinnacle point was um, my ex-husband had his hands around my throat. And in that moment, my son came out of the um, room that he was playing in, I think was at the time, 
And the look on his face told me that that could never, ever happen again because I didn't want my children thinking that that was acceptable behaviour um, or growing up in that any longer. You know, the impact of that really struck me in that moment. So it was only a few weeks after that then that um, that we left. And um, so, yeah, it took that period of time to kind of just find our feet and recover from that a bit. And then um, during COVID, we were, it was me and my kids, and we were, um, we were in COVID lockdown in Sydney where we lived and we had been, I think we were in lockdown at three months, for three months. So we hadn't seen another soul for three months and I was homeschooling both of them and, um, and I just thought to myself, like, even though I've left the marriage, like my life still isn't my own. My life is not what I want it to be. I am not living my authentic life and I am not being my authentic self. And it was in that time then I just I decided I'm um leaving Sydney and I'm I'm moving to Western Australia and I'm leaving corporate life because that's no longer serving me well either and I have my aspirations to be kind of master of my own destiny. So you and made some you made some big decisions all at once. They massive must, changes. That must have been really yes. that must have been really what you scared the word or or um I I was scared a little, a tiny bit, but there was no time for fear. Like I told myself every day, fear kills dreams. And that's my tagline on every post I make now, fear kills dreams, because if you allow fear to step in, then you will be stuck forever. And so um, I didn't allow the fear to be there, even though moving to a new city with two children on your own, enormously um, stressful and scary and COVID borders and all of those things and not knowing what we were going to be in for. Um, parts of it were scary, but it was more, I was more scared of doing nothing than of doing something. Wow. Thank you for sharing that story. I mean, that's, I mean, I hope it didn't trigger anything from, from going through it all, it's but all good. Your, your, yeah. your message is going to be really powerful for women out there that are, good. that are looking for that time to break away. Now, pretty. You've got a similar similar story. You're from, from a cultural marriage. Um, do you mind sharing your story just as uh, Rebecca has, please? Sure. Hi, Derek. Yes, I'm happy to share my story. And I'll start with, it was 18 of September 2006 when I found myself on the bathroom floor planning to end my life because I thought I had no way out. Mm. I thought, you know, I was in such a state of despair I, I felt like a failure. I felt like a failure as a mom. I felt like a failure as a wife. And I felt like a failure as a daughter. All right. And I felt like I wasn't good enough. So why would I want to live when my whole life has been with, I've been brought up to please everyone. Then I, as an adult, I became a doormat for everyone to walk on. And it felt like, you know, with each day, all I was doing is getting deeper and deeper into this rabbit hole that I didn't know how to get out of. You were, you were a corporate, you were a lawyer at the time. Yes, I was a lawyer. I, yep, that's right. I was a lawyer. I had a great job. But people ask me, later and no one knew what was happening no one knows what happens like Rebecca says no one knows what happens behind closed doors right so it was in I was in a circumstances that didn't serve me but that compounded my own limiting beliefs of myself it reinforced the experiences I had in my marriage the relationships with my in-laws all of that just compounded the limiting beliefs the, um, you know, the, the belief that I was not good enough has in any role that I played, I felt like I wasn't good enough. And that brought me to that place where I had no way out but to end my life. But at that crossroads was when I met the strength in me. That was the place that I met my true authentic self who said, what are you doing? What are you doing? You've got a son. How is he going to manage life without you? 
I had this power within me. I, I felt I was overcome by this power, this strength that pulled me up from the floor, took me out of that bathroom, and I just decided I was going to write. And, you know, Derek, I, I, what I did was I wrote and I wrote. It, it turned out to be my commitment statement to myself. But that commitment statement was to never put myself that low again, never be in that position again. I then decided, look, I knew that was no longer the life I wanted, but I had to start setting intentions and taking action for what I wanted to achieve, who I wanted to become, what I wanted to have, and what is the impact I want to have, right? Not just with my son, but everyone else around me. And, and you, are, you identified this when you picked yourself up before you started writing. So that's, that's that, that, that was what... That's what turned it, it around. Like I said, sometimes till today, I don't know where that strength came from. But you know what? In each one of us, there is the magic. There is power within each one of us. But we got to make sure that we stop and recognize and acknowledge it. Sometimes it needs someone else to come into your life to show you that these are the gifts you have within you. Mm. Let's awaken that gift. And thank you, thank you for sharing that. I mean, again, I hope it didn't trigger you. And it's a powerful message for women no. that are listening that are probably finding, well, they're finding themselves in the same situation now. To turn this, you know, to turn it towards how you guys work, and let's talk about Shift Q, the Shift Q program. How does that work? You, know, you empower women to be the best versions of themselves. Who wants to talk about that? I could start by what is most important the way I see it and what I had to do and the work I had to do for myself was self-compassion. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have to start recognizing our own strengths, our own values, believing in ourselves, so self-belief, self-love, and also then shift from self-judgment, stop, and, and being critical, critical of ourselves and things we do and shifting it to being more empowered, feeling like, yes, we are worthy. We are worthy of our own love. And we want to be authentic, allow our true selves to surface. And self-compassion, that's one of our programs is around self-compassion. And that's what we do. We, we help you shift from self-judgment to self-love. So Rebecca, who's your audience? Who, 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 who's your message best suited for? Your program. Oh. You know, we are passionate about helping any woman, any woman who wants more, deserves more, needs more for herself. Um, they don't have to come from a domestic violence background. They don't have to have experienced extreme trauma. You know, there are so many women out there who, who have experienced no trauma, but they are not living a life that is serving them well. They might be experiencing depression. They might be experiencing anxiety or they might be experiencing less than for themselves. Well, they just mm. like what you said before. They just like feel like they deserve more. Yeah, well, if they feel like they deserve more, then, they, then that would mean that they probably do deserve more. Yeah. And sometimes I like to say they don't even recognise that they deserve more. They don't give themselves... That's permission. exactly right. Yeah. All right. So what we do is we enable that. We help them to realize, look here, you do have permission to dream. You do have permission to feel. You do have permission to want more. And that's not about being selfish, right? That's about thriving, not surviving. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, so many people ask me, Derek, like, how were you in that for 25 years? And my answer to that is like, there's a few reasons. Like one, you know, psychologists would tell you there's the cycle of abuse, right? So it's not like that every minute of every day mm -hmm. and it gets better and you pray on it getting better and you're in love and you want the picture and all of those things. The other part of that is as well is there's 10, there, there becomes this layer of believing that that's your lot in life. Like that's what it, it, it's come your way because that's what you deserve. But in actual, actual fact, that's not true. Like no one deserves that. Mm. And I'd like to add that from the audience that have been coming through our programs, 
initially we started off with wanting to focus on emerging female leaders, women in um, migrant women in corporate Australia, helping them to elevate themselves and see their true value. But we've had a whole range, as Rebecca is saying, we've had a whole range. We've had women who are going back to work, women who've um, just recently got divorced and don't know what to do with their lives. We've had a whole range. Young women, older women, like different um, races, like all sorts of women. That's excellent. Fantastic work, guys. How do people get hold of you if they want to start the conversation? What what do you suggest that they do for this first thing that they can do? The um, easiest way to get hold of us is find us on LinkedIn. We're always hanging out there. That's the, that's the first thing. Um, and then the other way is through our respective uh, websites. We can share those links with you. Um, but yeah, that's the best way to find us. Oh, and they don't have to be someone, doesn't have to be someone domestic violence, just could be someone that's feeling stuck women that are feeling stuck and want to feel like they deserve more and, yes. and how to explore that. And you'll teach them guys, teach them ways how to explore that and how to make the break or, or how to think, think, think through it. Yes. It's, it's for them to recognize what's their vision. We, what we do is we help them see the vision, you know, identify their values, their purpose, things like that. And then also practice those shifts that we will we will definitely take them through but like I said even though we've got the shift queue program we are happy to sit and work out any specific programs that's required we will work out and collaborate with you on that yeah so we deliver that Derek through one-on-one coaching as well as our group um, program work so it could be a single mom could be a lawyer could be a could be anyone anyone every 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 woman that once better, once more. Personally, I think every woman should elevate their worth. Every woman needs to ele- help. You know, what we want to do is help them elevate their worth, know their value. All right, guys. So I think we'll leave it there, but I'll, I appreciate you guys sharing your story with me. It's It's been fantastic talking to you. I'm really excited to be able to share your message so that we can help women that are, that are wanting more from life. Um, so you'll send me through your... your um, details and I'll put them in the post so that people can get to them and um, so again thanks a lot my name is Derek Bess I'm from the Beacon Fight for Life please make sure you take the time to smile today thank you thanks for having us Derek thank you